Well, good morning, everyone. How's, have we got volume on this? Okay, good morning. Uh, welcome. Welcome to those who are with us uh, for the first time today. We have a few uh, newbies, as it were, and so it's great to have you with us. Uh, welcome to those who've come back after some time away, and to Leo and family who are just back after visiting first time last week. So lovely to have you with us, Leo. And um, Jason, lovely to see you back. And uh, Kevin, it's great to have you here. Just uh, by way of introduction, this is our monthly intergenerational service. So we're going to be exploring the gospel reading for today uh, using a different approach. Uh, there will be a bit of activity to do on your tables, a bit to discuss together. It's not too threatening, it's not too hard, and, uh, but there will be communion as normal. We'll start as normal and we'll have communion as normal. So we start with our first song, which is, funnily enough, one I was trying to sing during the week and remind Helen of it, and I couldn't get the first part, I could only get the second part of it, and I said, I really love that song, and then you chose it for today. So I'm, I'm excited about our first song. <laughs> Well, aren't I just fabulous? <laughs> so let's stand and praise the God. This is a song of Moses. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be Save from my enemies. Why oh, will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised? So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord liveth, blessed be my rock, and may the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth. Blessed be my rock, and may the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Lord, live and bless be my rock, and may the God of my salvation be exalted. Lord, live and bless be my rock, and may the God of my salvation be and so we pray together, Father God, you know all about us, what we think and what we do. Help us to be with you now make us clean inside. We want to love you and to praise you. Help us love other people. Amen. Would you like to be seated? We come seeking forgiveness for all we have failed to be and do. In God there is forgiveness. Together, loving and all-seeing God, forgive us where we have failed to support one another and to be what we claim to be. Forgive us where we have failed to serve you and where our thoughts and actions have been contrary to yours, we ask your pardon. Amen. God forgives us. Be at peace. Rejoice and be glad. Go back a slide. Okay, sorry, it's missing. We shall all be one in Christ, one in our life together. Praise to God who has created us. Praise to God who has accepted us. 
Praise to God who sends us into the world. And so to birthdays. There aren't any birthdays recorded in the kit sheet. Is there anybody with a birthday this week? You have a birthday? Oh, Monday. Let's write it down for future reference. So that's the 13th. Anybody else? Carol, and you. Is it? <laughs> That's just funny. It's not in the in the book. So, Carol, and when's your birthday, Max? Yours was last Sunday. Okay, but you probably won't be with us next year, will you? Because you're visiting from England today. Max, when is your birthday? Tuesday, so that's the 14th. <laughs> okay, so we've got um, Carol last week, Desmond and Max. Right? Carol, Desmond, Max. Birthday greetings today. May God bless you, we pray. Live for Jesus, dear Carol and Desmond and Max. May he guide you each day. And happy day to you, all three of you. Well, is there anything outstanding that you wish to tell us about that the Lord's been up to? We won't take too much time on it because we've got a lot to get through today. No? Okay. Um, can I just check how things are with Lorraine at Blockhouse Bay? Lorraine is looking after Blockhouse Bay for uh, between Vickers. Made a good start last week. Okay, well, let's stand and continue as worship God as we sing uh, Alleluia, praise to the Lamb of God. That's right, Desmond, once you get into the birthday book, there's no getting out. <laughs> so. When's isn't yours, Craig? And isn't there something sinister about it saying, oh, it's your birthday, you probably won't be with us next year. <laughs> I knew that Carol had, was visiting us from England. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stop being naughty, Craig. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty reigns.
theme that sort of runs through a few of these uh, these songs that we're doing is one of uh, perhaps our feeling helpless or out of our depth and feeling that we still have a faithful God on whom we can call. Thirsty desert ground in dry and barren land, I bow down. I need you now. You are calm, and I will come to your river. I will run, I bow down. I need you now As we sing that, we are mindful of those who, whose houses have been flooded uh, last fortnight and may feel quite desperate. And we, we put our own needs before you, but we also put their needs before you. And those in Turkey and in Syria and in Ukraine, Lord, if they ever need you, they need you now. And we pray your mercy on them and on us. Amen. All right, would you like to be seated? So today, our theme is straightening out the tangles. 
and we're looking at the portion of the Sermon on the Mount, when part of Jesus' teaching, which will come clear as we work through things. You know, the people in Israel in the time of Jesus had been through, been oppressed by a number of other nations. The Romans were ruling them and there was the Pax Romana and a Roman rule which said that they had to do things in such and such a way. Before that, the Greeks were over them and they had to do things the Greek way. And before that, the Persians were over them. They had to do it the Persian way. And then they had their own law. And all these things together and their own thinking about all these things had made life quite complicated. They'd made up their own rules about how to live to try to make sure that they kept God's law as given to them by Moses. How to navigate. You know, it's a, it's a bit like the example of um, you're driving over the harbour bridge and there are barriers on either side of the bridge to stop you going off into the water. If you didn't have that barrier, you probably wouldn't be very happy to drive in the outside lane in case you accidentally went off into the water. And so going off into the water is breaking the law. The barrier is a safety margin inside the law which just says, well, keep safe, don't go too close to the edge. And so there were rules that the Jewish teachers had built up which were like those safety barriers of don't go too close to the edge, keep back a bit, be a bit more strict than the law actually said. And so by the time of Jesus, things were rather confusing. Which were important, which rules were important, which rules weren't, how should we understand them? So it was a bit of a tangly mess, you might say. And so over the table here, we've got a tangly mess. I need some helpers to untangle it. So as we do, we're going to work out the gospel reading today. So can I have some helpers, please? If you get your father on the camera, yes, you can come. We need young helpers and perhaps some older helpers to work with them. I need about 16, so don't, don't be too, too much holding back. That's half the congregation. <laughs> Minimum, I think, is eight. So I wonder whether I might get an Alex to help. So come around this side so people can see you on the camera and the congregation can see you. And what we have here is... Like in the picture, we've got cards, coloured cards, with writing on them, and they're tied to other cards of the same colour, and they're all tangled up in the middle. And so we want you to try to untangle this. And um, can you come round more to the, re to the back side where uh, Robin is and leave the front clear so the camera can see what's going on for the recording? That's right. You go, you go that way so you can be there. Just leave this part open. And... Um, as you're working on them, folks, and you try to untangle this mess, um, you can read out what's on the card so we all hear. I'll just get a microphone so you can do that. We've got a microphone here, so if someone's... Peter, what's on yours? Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. Yes. Helen, what have you got on yours? So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you... Uh, do I read the... So we've got bits and pieces here. What's on your one, Elizabeth? Oh, you've got Which two. Which one? Oh, you read one of them. It was also said, whoever discovers his wife... Divorces. <laughs> divorces his wife, let him give her a certain of divorce. Well done. Can you read one of those? But to say to you... 
and then I said I would do the next bit. Do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. So we've got bits and pieces of the reading here, and they're all jumbled up like the tangle in the middle of the table, which seems to be getting worse rather than better. <laughs> Have you got one, Carol? Not yet, sorry. <laughs> Wendy did it, I don't know. <laughs> this may take slightly longer than we imagined. Wendy asked me if I thought it was tangled enough. <laughs> Sorry? Okay. So we've got chapter 21, that's our starter. That's Five. our red. Five. 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 Yes. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. And verse 22 says, but I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. Verse 23. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, verse 24, leave your gift there before you the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gifts. 25a, come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're on the way to court with him. And 25b, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. And 20, where's it, 26? We don't have a 26, okay. 27, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. And 28 says, but I say to you, that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And 29 says, if your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for or your whole body to be thrown into hell. And verse 30 says, and if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. Is that the same? Right hand and right eye, yes. 31, it was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. And 32 says, but I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. And 33 says, again, you have heard that it was this said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. And 34 says, but I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. 36 says, and do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. And the last one, 37, says, let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. Thank you, Jill. So just to review that, Jesus takes the old rules and all the tangle of our lives and the understanding of those rules and he helps straighten them out. 
he, he says, anger comes straight back at you. It will burn you up if you let it. He says, get things straightened out with one another, make peace. That's more important even than coming to the temple to worship. He says, men and women shouldn't look at each other as objects, but have sort of relationships with each other that look straight in the eye as fellow humans. He says, decisions which impact other people need to be straight and serious. Don't let your difficulties make life difficult for other people. And he says, speak the truth plainly. You don't need to swear oaths, just be honest and mean what you say. So there's quite a broad range of things there in, in, those, um, in that teaching of Jesus. And it's too much for us to deal with all in now, so we're going to focus on the anger one in particular. And Jesus warns that anger has danger. It can get out of hand. The Bible tells a story of two brothers, very, very, very long time ago, who one of them got jealous of the other. And because he was jealous, he got angry. And God spoke to him and said, why are you angry? Why is your face dark with rage? He must have been very, very angry, mustn't he? If your face is dark with rage. He says, it can be bright with joy if you do what you should, but if you refuse to obey, watch out. Sin is waiting to attack, longing to destroy you, but you can conquer it. But the man didn't listen. He carried on with his anger. And one day he said to his brother, let's go out into the field, and out in the field he killed him. And there Cain had killed his brother Abel. St. Paul wrote about anger, and he said, if you are angry, don't sin by nursing your grudge. Don't let the sun go down on your being angry. Settle things before the day is over. For when you are angry, you give a foothold to the enemy. I wonder if Paul was thinking about Cain and Abel at that time, of how Cain had nursed his anger, and he had not forgiven Abel at the end of the day. He had allowed that anger to get bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger and until finally it found expression in murder. And I wonder if that's what Jesus was thinking about when he said uh, anger is the root of murder. But on the other hand, not all anger is wrong. There is righteous anger. Anger is a strong emotional reaction to something that seems to us to be unfair or wrong. And sometimes we're right. It is unfair. It is wrong. And it's right that we should be stirred up by that. But what do you do with that anger? St. James wrote, Every person should be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Human anger doesn't produce God's justice. Anger is a strong emotion that moves us to action. The trouble is, it moves us to shout and to hit and to hurt people if we let it be uncontrolled. But it's best to make sure we know the truth. Are we right in what we think is terribly wrong? Maybe we've just misunderstood. Maybe we need to talk to the person and find out what they really thought. And they didn't mean what we thought at all. Often that's the case. We need to keep control of ourselves to think about ways to use that strong energy of anger in a good way instead of a hitting, hurting, nasty way. It lets us then to think and to respond rather than just to react in anger. So instead of hurting the other person, how can we make the situation better? Now, on your tables, you've got a CD and a marker pen on each table. I wonder if you could write down on that CD something that makes you angry, that typically in this area you are angered by something that you come across. Now, there's one CD and there are more than one of you at most tables, but you can can write down one word that you think is good. You could each write down a word as you think about why... What what sort of things get me angry? I remember being asked this by a counsellor, and I said, actually, 
bureaucrats being obstructed get me really angry. <laughs> and in England, there are a lot of it was in England, there are a lot of bureaucrats in England who seem to make life very difficult and not help us on our way. So you think about what it is and write that down. We're going to do something with that afterwards. Something that makes you angry? Yes, yeah. Anything else that makes you angry? Make me a channel of your peace, which is uh, attributed to St. Francis of Assisi as he prayed and led a prayer that uh, God would use us for good and not for hate to bring pardon rather than injury. Sorry. Uh, you all have on your tables a slightly odd assortment of items. You have one marble. Has anyone lost their marble today? They go rolling around. <laughs> we know, <laughs> Lucas. Um, you have a bit of blue tack as well that you can stretch out. And you have a bottle cap. You can go ahead and sit down if you like. You can go ahead and sit down. There you go. Okay, what we're going to do is turn our CDs that say something that makes us angry into a tool that helps us deal with that anger. Okay, so you're going to take your marble, put it on one side of the CD, and then take your blue tack, stretch it out on the other side so that it holds the marble in place. The marble on one side, and then put the blue tack on the other side, and it will hold the marble there. Even if it doesn't, that's okay. The marble will stay on the bottom once we put it down. And then once you've stretched out your blue tack, you should be able to take your bottle cap, put it on top of the blue tack, and you should have, if the marble's on the bottom, a top that you can spin, hopefully. If the marble's on the bottom and the bottle cap's on the top. There we go. I see a few spinning. We got it? I'll give you a minute to finish it. on the other side. Got it. How do I think? That's all right. Oh, there they go. <laughs> Some of them are made in different ways, but they seem like they're working. Okay, so it's like Ian said, it's when... Um, we have anger, which is not a sin, but it's the very quick response, reaction, that sometimes causes years of damage. But if we take a moment to think about how could we use those feelings of frustration and anger in a way about bringing peace in a way for good, we can achieve something that maybe wouldn't have come out of from the other side, okay? So I timed mine last night. Um, you can say what you want while it's spinning, but it gives you a minute to think. How am I going to deal with this? What's the right way to respond to this one thing that has made me angry? And how can I bring peace to it? So I timed it last night, and I actually got through the first verse of saying the lyrics to make me a channel of your peace while my top was spinning. And then that thing that had made me angry, that I'd been you know, imagining in my head, um, didn't feel so angry about that anymore because I'd taken the time to stop and pause with that. So if we could get our tops spinning, some will spin 
longer than others. You okay over there? Yeah? Okay. Okay. So mine, make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me show your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. I don't know it off the top of my head. <laughs> Where there is doubt, true faith in you. Okay. So you can do it with the top at home, or you can imagine the top in your head that is spinning, and you're thinking about ways that you would be able to bring peace to the situation. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Well done, Wendy. Thank you. So you can take that home, and uh, of course you can easily make one at home yourself. Just make sure the CD you take, mum or dad don't want that particular <laughs> CD. Okay. So let's have the, the next slide, shall we? Thank you. So let's uh, pray together the prayer for today. God of Israel, old and new, write in our hearts the lesson of your law, Prepare our minds to receive the gospel Jesus showed us. Amen. One of the things Jesus said about anger is there are times when we need to make peace. And he said, go and be reconciled with the person that you're upset with. He said it's so important, if you were bringing an offering to the temple in his day, you should leave it, go off and sort things out, and then come back and make your offering. Many pastors will say, no, no, give the money first and then you can do, do that messy bit. But Jesus said, no, you, you, your offering needs to be done from a good heart. And um, that's why we have the peace in the service, which we're going to have in a moment. We share the peace because we're giving an opportunity to sort anything out in relationships where there is some hard feeling or this hurt or upset before we go to take communion. So we get the chance to make peace with God through the confession, which we've already done, and we have the chance to make peace with our fellow brothers and sisters here if there's anything outstanding in the peace. It's not actually intended as a, how are you, haven't seen you for a while, you're keeping well, oh, you've got a sniffle. It's not about that. It's about we are at peace with each other, and if we're not, let's do something about it. So would you like to stand? May the peace of Christ be always with you. Let's share that peace with one another. Just saying, peace be with you.
Father, we thank you that we've been able to make offerings to you through the bank system. We pray that you would take all that we give, you'd bless it and bless us in the giving, and use it to the extension of your kingdom. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God, you made us and the world and everything in it. All the good we see comes from you. You've always loved us, but people have not always loved you. You sent Jesus to show us how to live and to bring us back to you again. He died for us on the cross so that through your spirit we can all be your people. And so with thanks we praise you saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We are here because on the night before he died, Jesus had a meal with his friends. He took some bread and gave thanks to you, Father. He broke it into pieces and gave it to them, saying, This is my body. Do this and know that I am with you. Later he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to you. He shared it with them and said, This is my body which brings new life. Do this and know that I am with you. And so remembering Jesus who died, was raised to new life by you and is alive forever, we are glad to share that life and live in him and proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be for us the body and blood of Jesus. And through this food, give us strength to live as your people. Help us to care for your world and for each other in the way that Jesus showed us. Until he comes again with all your people in every time and every land, we worship you in songs of everlasting peace. Blessing, honour and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Christ's body was broken for us on the cross. Christ is the bread of life. His blood was shed for our forgiveness. Christ is risen from the dead. Come, God's people. Come and receive Christ's heavenly food. So now we have the Lord's Prayer. As Christ teaches us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Merciful Father, who gave Jesus Christ to be for us the bread of life, that those who come to him should never hunger, draw us to the Lord in faith and love, that we may eat and drink with him at his table in the kingdom. Amen. Would you be seated? Now, we have the notices that not this coming week, but the following week is going to be the start of Lent. And so the tradition is that on the Eve before Lent starts, you have pancakes using up all the eggs before you don't use them at all during Lent, which is the old tradition. So Tuesday evening, we've got pancakes from 5 to 6.30 in the hall. They're savoury and sweet pancakes. Uh, it'd be helpful if you'd let us know you're coming for, um, for catering. And there's a sign up. Lucas, are you saying you're coming? Yes. All oh, right. Good man. Okay. Um, I like pancakes too. And uh, so Lucas and I will be eating pancakes, and some of you might choose to accompany us. 
The next day, on Ash Wednesday, we've got the start of Lent, and we'll be having a 10 a.m. service, not an evening service this year, so uh, do consider coming to be part of that as part of your Lenten, the start of your Lenten uh, self-discipline and spiritual focus. Also to say that the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, of course, has caused massive damage. Uh, there is an appeal to help with the aftermath of that. In the kit sheet, you can see how you can do a bank transfer for that, or if you wish to do cash, there are envelopes on the sides person's table there that you can take away and bring back with uh, money in so that it will go to that purpose. So those three notices, they're all in the kit sheet, but to make sure that you're aware of them. But I want to say something quickly about uh, the storm. Um, obviously, we're concerned about those who already have uh, suffered flooding and, um, and damage because of the storm last week, the last fortnight. And we have the threat of Cyclone Gabriel. You know, I think it's not just a case of saying, oh God, please protect us. I think we have a responsibility as Christians to work with the Lord as his agents on earth to pray and to be instructing the weather what to do. Now, you may think, gosh, I've never heard of that. I know Jesus stilled the storm, but, but over the years, Helen and I have often prayed about the weather and we don't pray selfishly. We pray for protection or for particular needs and have seen quite remarkable changes in answer to prayer. So I'm leading up to the idea we're going to pray about the, the cyclone. Um, on the, po on the, on the uh, praying for a certain condition, when my son was about three or four years old, we'd been away on a church army mission for a week in Stratford, and as we left to drive home, it was clear sky, and a little boy pipes up from the back seat, Daddy, I want you to pray for it to rain. And I said, well, I don't want it to rain, so no, I'm not going to pray for it to rain. He said, but I want it to rain. I said, well, I don't want it to rain. If you want it to rain, you pray for it to rain. So he says, dear Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask for it to rain today. Well, we drove north, and as we drove north, the clouds developed and got thicker and thicker. We got to Perongia and absolutely bucketed down with the wipers on full speed. I was down to 10 kilometres an hour because I could hardly see the road. So intense was the rainfall. We heard when we got home that the southern motorway had been closed because it had flooded in places uh, where there were dips in the motorway. And then the weather report said that the cyclone that had been heading down and was due to cross over the North Island from west to east, north of Auckland, had suddenly changed course and gone south and come across Hamilton and then gone off to the east from there. So we said to him, you be careful what you pray for, there's power in prayer. But um, there have been other times when we've prayed for things to be averted. There was a time when I was helping a couple move house from Mount Eden to Patamahori. And they had, he, the, the husband and I were doing all the lifting and he'd hired a van. And it was pouring with rain. And so we prayed and the rain eased off in Mount Eden and we managed to get things into the truck. And then we drove south and the rain was pouring down and we prayed and I said, in Jesus' name, let there be a clearing when we get there to unload. And we got there and there was a little circle of blue sky immediately above the cottage where they were and we got, carried everything inside and we got back in the truck and down came the rain again and we drove back to Auckland and then we prayed again and the rain eased to Mount Eden and we got another truckload loader back down there. Again, the skies cleared and we, there was no rain on the furniture as we carried it in. God was very merciful. There are many other stories I could tell as well, but I think you get the idea. Jesus commanded the storm to subside, and um, I think we need to be telling Gabriel that uh, the storm needs either just to wither and die out or drop the, drop the rain over the ocean, not on land. So it's up in that direction. It's uh, nor-nor-west nor of us. So I'd like those who are willing to join me, and you don't have to, but if you'd like to join me to stand and face in that direction, and we're going to tell it what it ought to do in Jesus' name. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ.